Check it out, everyone. I am back at Al's cabin, and it is a beautiful, sunny February day here in the Pacific Northwest. And we are going to be picking up where we left off last time I was here with Al's life story. Look at all these pictures that Al's got out here. Looks like there's a lot going on in the 60s. There's a lot of girls that screamed. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. There's Dipstick. What are you doing, Dip Dip? It's your load of cook wood here. <laughs> yeah, some of this is a little bit damp. So put it in these milk crates. And then just by the creek stove for it dries it out. Oh, that makes sense. Turn it around here once in a while. Nice and warm in here. Yeah, I can let that go out today. <laughs> So today I think we're gonna do some filming outside just because it's such a beautiful day. And then uh, we'll probably come back in here later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be walking on the picture. <laughs> we're locking dipstick in the house. <laughs> and you graduated high school in 58? Okay. 63. We'd go down to New York City once in a while on weekends. It was only like a three, four hour drive. This was in the Central Park. And who's that? My first wife. Okay. Before she was my wife. This was the University of New Hampshire in 61. I was in Montreal at Oktoberfest. Montreal wasn't that far either. So I'd go up there for weekends once in a while. Yeah, it was typical New Hampshire in the winter. That's the campus? This is one of the dorms. This was the first dorm I lived in, first one of the freshmen. There you go. There's two windows right up there. And they had a big winter carnival. And they built these awesome snow sculptures. Hmm. Oh, so these are some yeah, of the that's sculptures? All made are... out of snow and ice, yeah. Oh, that's is a that a train? train. Oh, yeah. now I can see it. Yeah, they were awesome. And some weekends we'd take, go up to my uh, parents' cabin up on the lake and have parties uh -huh. without my parents knowing. <laughs> 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 this was the morning after a party. Went out and had everybody get in the rowboat and take a picture for you. Fun of it. Is that on the snow? That's on the ice. Yeah. This is a lake. So the lake was frozen and yeah, covered it, with snow. Yeah, it freezes over the whole lake every winter. So this picture with you up to your waist <laughs> in the lake with the bottle of booze. You said there were some rocks out there. Yeah, that that you could like just... a rock ledge. Oh, okay. It was pretty shallow. <laughs> and you hit the boat prop on that a couple times. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it was at right beach back when I was in good shape. <laughs> yeah. Looking pretty good there. Yeah. Beach bought out. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad working on the dock. I put oh. some steel I beams into the bank because in the winter it would get all ice and it would wipe out anybody's dock if you had filings or anything. So he had steel I beams into the bank at night. I think it worked. Remember that uh, yellow Porsche that was in one of the videos that everybody commented on and mm -hmm. I had to tell them it wasn't mine. A friend of mine. Well, I just found out last week that that guy that owned that Porsche he died last April. Mm -hmm. He was a good friend and roommate in college. I emailed him back in I think December or so. Said are you still around? And then his wife just emailed me last week and said he died last April after a couple of bad years. But that was the last time I saw him when he was at the yellow Porsche. You see him on the left there. Well, this is him with the fourth in, in the trio there. Yeah. This is him, my first wife and my girlfriend and I. Name was, I saw him. Yeah, so you guys were pretty close then, yeah. around that time. Yeah, we were roommates and best friends a couple of years. He was a good guy. Yeah, the International Students Association chapter there. I hung around with them more than I did the Americans. Really? <laughs> yeah, got along real good with Foreign students, another friend and a roommate. He flunked out or dropped out or something. And so he got drafted, went to Vietnam. Got, came back and died a few years later. Cancer from Agent Orange. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, he was a good guy. He was a heavy drinker though. He was into 58 Chevy Impalas, black convertibles. I don't know how many he had, but he had at least four or five. And he wrecked every one of them. Oh my God. I was living at my parents' house in Rye, and uh, he came by with another friend to pick me up to go down to the beach, and uh, I wasn't home. My parents told me later he'd, he'd come by and found out. Just a few minutes after he left my parents' house, he hit a tree and killed his friend. 
in the passenger side. So I looked out and not being on there, because I probably would have gone with him. Oh. Although I, I pretty much avoided riding with him after once or twice. So I, I probably would have said no. Oh, there's my Porsche that doesn't look so good. That's what happens when you drive fast on the winter road <laughs> in New Hampshire. <laughs> and that's Walt there. I think I had seven people in the, in the car. We were headed up to my cabin to party or somewhere. In what car? In this car. This car. <laughs> How is that even possible? I don't know. We were crazy. <laughs> and the roads were all ice and snow covered. And, oh my gosh. And you had ruts and holes. And, but you couldn't hurt yourself because the snow banks were like three, four feet high on both sides. You couldn't really do a whole lot of damage. Well, we went over a little rise and we started spinning. And <laughs> we went around, spun around two or three times. And thought we were going to make it straight. But, you know banged into the snow bank. And that's, <laughs> that's where that came that's from. That's where that gave room. Well, a few pictures of my dad smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember smiling my, my sister, dad, niece, future wife. Yeah. My father-in-law is a Vermont farmer. So this was your first wife's dad? Yep. Yeah. The picture in front of their house, Chester, Vermont. That was where we got the first wife marriage first time. I don't know if you can see the scar on my head or not. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. There. I was out here in the yard playing football with her dad and her two brothers. Just throwing a football around. Football landed by right here by the this Toyota on the ground. I've been over to pick it up and one of her brothers opened the car door <laughs> right on my head oh. as I was getting up. So I showed up at the wedding with a big <laughs> it's a car in the head. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> this was a car I had back in 64. This was a 1941 Lincoln Continental. <laughs> it was a pretty cool car. And it called Mistake. Mistake. <laughs> uh, you could crawl from the back seat into the place where the convertible top went down and you could crawl in back under here under the trunk lid. So I had to have some fun one day. We, I think it was Walt. Yeah, he crawled back there and we left this lid open a little bit with his arm dangling out and we poured some ketchup down his arm and, <laughs> and drove slow around campus. <laughs> there was a lot of girls that screamed. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and then he'd push the lid up after the yeah. cream. Anyway, he must have traded that for a Volkswagen bus. It took me five and a half years to get through college to, uh, for a four year course. <laughs> I was too busy partying. I only took one or two courses at the last year or two and worked part time. So my parents were so happy that I finally made it through and got a degree that uh, they Give me a, took me on a Caribbean cruise two weeks, I think it was. But they didn't give me a separate cabin, and stayed in a little tiny cabin with them. <laughs> I guess I slept there a couple of nights, and then I met a, a single girl that had her own cabin. So I pretty much stayed with her. <laughs> and we'd stay out all night. Sometimes I'd come in at like five or six in the morning. And parents went, yeah. They finally got used to the idea. I was 24 at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. I was a big boy. <laughs> and they'd say, well, you gonna get up and come to breakfast for me? I'd just gotten to sleep, bro. <laughs> no, I'm gonna skip breakfast. They had amazing food. This is one of the restaurant menus, is it? It was just, yeah, one of the regular dinner menus. Oh, no, that was lunch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> To half a dozen different Caribbean islands plus Venezuela. It's a lot of places. Yeah, I think that was in Venezuela. I think she was a little older than me. Yeah. I didn't care. She had her own cabin. <laughs> <laughs> there weren't a whole lot of single people on the cruise. It was mostly old, retired people. <laughs> and they had all kinds of bars all over the boat. And I'd make the rounds every day. <laughs> all the bartenders knew what I was thinking. <laughs> Like 40 cents, 60 cents for a drink. <laughs> oh, so we got back from the cruise. You know, I had graduated 
and a half year in December or whenever it was. Carol and I had planned on coming to the West Coast after she graduated in June. So I was going to hang out for six months and wait for her to graduate. And then we were going to head for the West Coast. Well, we got back from the cruise and there was a draft notice waiting in the mail for me because I had been in school. I had a student deferment before that. And so I went up to college and got a hold of my girlfriend, Carol, and said, well, uh, either we get married or we're not going to the West Coast. And she said, no, I don't think so. So I proceeded to drink a bottle of rum that I'd brought back from the Caribbean, 151 proof, and passed out on the floor. Luckily, I lived through it somehow. And she came banging on the door the next morning and said, okay, we can get married. Wow. I said, thank you. Now go away, come back later. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go to the physical. I think I went up to, into the, the Army physical on a Monday. And then we got married the next Sunday. Took the marriage seat to get down to the draft board. And I was safe for a while. Yeah. <laughs> that was back. I think Kennedy was president or something. So if you were married, you, you didn't get drafted. If you were single, unmarried, of a certain age, and male, you were going to be drafted. And, and not in school. And not in school. <laughs> you were going to be sent to war, basically. Right. Okay. Whether you wanted to or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you were against the war? Yes. Okay. There was a lot of a lot of protests back then. Okay. Most people couldn't see a reason for Vietnam. Yeah. Especially younger people. Yeah. And there were a lot of protests and a lot of stories that came out of Vietnam about the horrors and, and everything going on. So there were a lot of people for it. And I respect all the people that got drafted or signed up and went. I respect all the veterans for doing that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us didn't believe in it. And yeah. I was one that didn't. Yeah. So I was going to avoid it at all. Anything I could do to avoid it. And I'm glad I did. I think it was the right choice. Yeah. I've got a lot of friends that didn't make it back and a lot of friends that died after they got back. And the ones that didn't die, they're They've been messed up for life, you know. They they won't talk about it. Or they, you know, they got well PTSD. They call it, you know. Mm. Self-defense is one thing. Like when we got attacked in Pearl Harbor, you know, if I'd been of age then, I might have might have signed up. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, self-defense is one thing. But attacking another country war and uh, unless there's a good reason I'm against it yeah you yeah. know so we got this Volkswagen bus well it was actually it was just an empty van my mother and father-in-law at their house in Vermont brought this empty van had nothing in it and you know, I fixed it all up and built a bed inside and the counters and, and, and this was after I got done with it Camper out of it. Nice. Yeah, it turned out really good. Would you say there was a main driving force that was? Oh, for coming out west. Yeah. Yeah, I had seen a picture that somebody had traveled out here, and a picture they'd taken in Portland from the Rose Garden city in the foreground and the Mount Hood sticking up there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, They'd been to Alaska, the people who took these pictures, and they said, wow, is that Alaska? It looked really, like a really nice place. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, that's Portland, Oregon. So we made this Volkswagen camper. These are kind of fuzzy. Uh, well, this was uh, the first camp in New York State. The Eisenhower Locks in New York State. We had this young, a big kitten, you know, we took with us. I think that was, was that Low and Brown. Yeah, we named him. Or low and brown. Low and brown. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, because mm. they had a lot of breweries there. Mm. 
So we were going to hit all the breweries in one day. And this was uh, at the Schlitz Brewery, I think. First one. We had a few beers there. We were on our way to the Pabst Brewery. And the clutch cable broke in the Volkswagen bus. In no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a real great part of town. Somehow, oh, I guess I looked in the phone book. I found a Volkswagen garage. Left the camper and Carol beside the road and uh, caught a bus. Figured out how to get to the Volkswagen dealer. And got a clutch cable, got a bus back and put it in. But by then it was getting late in the day. And we said, let's just get out of town. <laughs> That's all we have. Well, so we only made one brewery. Oh, oh, man. Out of half a dozen we were going to go to. <laughs> And we're on to South Dakota. This is in the Badlands. I had a storage box up there. And on the other side we had this long water, old water heater. We filled it with water. And I had it rigged up so we could take showers and stuff. And when we left home we had, I filled it up. And it was pretty heavy. <laughs> Top heavy. And I think we took one shower out of it. <laughs> and, Emptied it and said, forget that. <laughs> it's too heavy, we don't need that water. <laughs> That's the water heater upon that round thing? Yeah, I think it, was, it used to be an old hot water tank, maybe, or something like that. That was one sweet van. <laughs> oh, it says 110 degrees in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, in the Badlands, it was hot too. Middle of summer when we came across. That was back in our young, healthy days. <laughs> Well, we got to Yellowstone here. Yeah. Some of the hot springs in Yellowstone. You ever been to Yellowstone? No, never. It's amazing. In Montana? Uh, yeah. Well, Wyoming, Pardon. Montana. It's kind of on the border there somewhere. <laughs> it's long brown in the snow. <laughs> oh, where did we get snow? No, that was in Yellowstone. There was snow in, in July. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, yeah. Oh, Grand Canyon. The North Rim, much nicer than the South Rim. Yeah. Not so many people. Mm -hmm. And from the South Rim, we hiked down into the canyon. We were going to go all the way to the river. We got too hot. <laughs> it was in like in the hundreds. Oh, jeez. So four and a half miles one way. This one, this is Bryce. Yeah, I think Julie and I went there. That is I've been one of my favorites. Same spot. That one. Bryce Canyon. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorites. You went to Zion too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, this, this one's from Zion, I think. Rode up to Bryce, I believe. Yeah. There's a couple I've, of those holes yeah. you go through. I went down that same road recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's only one way to get yeah. to Bryce. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're into the redwoods now. There's a log you used to be able to drive out on. I don't know if they wow. still let you do that or not. There's Yosemite looking down. Wow. From some point. Jeez. Glacier point, I think it is. Yeah, you're looking straight down. <laughs> Stayed at a few campgrounds when we couldn't find any place else. But yeah. Mostly just uh, dry camps, you know, wherever we could find a good spot. We didn't come straight across. We came across to Yellowstone and then we went south, down through California and back up. I think we covered about 6,000 miles all together and it's only 3,000 miles across the country. Yeah. Wow. So we took our time, I think it was six weeks or so we took. Wow, so this was an epic, <laughs> it was journey, an epic journey across yeah. the country. In a Volkswagen bus. <laughs> oh, and then there's the story of the ending when we got to Oregon. Oh. The Oregon coast. Oh yeah, I think this is when we got to the Pacific Ocean finally. Mm. Making it to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first picture in Oregon, I think. So we're getting close to where we want to be. Yeah. Made it to Oregon. And came up the coast and came inland to McMinnville. We're almost into McMinnville and Engine Blue. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, boom. Yeah. Clack, 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 clack. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we were only about a mile from downtown Minville, McMinnville. So we just kind of chugged along in first gear. And oh, it was on a Sunday. So everything's closed. So everything was closed. <laughs> but they did have a Volkswagen garage in <laughs> McMinnville. So we, we made it in there into their parking lot. And I don't know if we got a hold of somebody there or something. But, and they couldn't do anything till Monday anyway. A cop came by and we were just gonna camp right there. And a cop came by to see what we were doing and all. 
We explained, and he said, oh, that's cool. We'll keep an eye on you, check on you once in a while during the night. So we parked, and there was a pizza place right across the street. We had pizza. The mechanics came in to work on Monday morning and took us right in. I said, sure, we can fix you up. And luckily, we still had enough money for another engine. Mm. Uh, that was a hell of an ending. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And it was a bang. Yeah, big bang. <laughs> oh, no. This is 65 now, so we've been there for a year or so. It was up skiing. That's a ski bowl. Nice. Across the mountain. And we loved it. Skiing was so much better than New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah, snow was nice, not icy. Mm. And then we traded the Volkswagen bus in for another Porsche. <laughs> it was the second Porsche. I think that might be up toward Mount St. Helens, maybe. Mm. Started out in an apartment in Portland, on southeast mm. Main Street, I think, right near, pretty close to downtown. We stayed there for a while and then moved out to Tigard after we both got jobs. We lived on the other side here. The couple that lived next to us, they had a Porsche too. <laughs> so we used to take trips, We'd take out two Porsches, go tripping around. We'd party all night. Yeah. Until <laughs> after midnight or so, and then he said, well, let's go to Ben's for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd hop in there, two Porsches, and about three or four in the morning, and we'd drive to Ben to have breakfast. Oh. <laughs> and there weren't too many people on the road. And so yeah. Of course, we went kind of fast. <laughs> this was the first house we bought. We lived in Tiger for a while. And I think that's the only apartment. It's just went from Portland to Tiger apartment, and then we bought a house in West Lynn. It took a couple of years, saved up enough money for down payment. Almost a new house with uh, wow. seven acres. It's a nice looking place. We really liked it, but it didn't have a fireplace. So they said, well, the guy that owns it is a builder. He'll put it in a fireplace. <laughs> Same price. Yeah, no charge. Wow. Yeah. So cool. that's this one that, that they put yeah, in? Yeah, they put that in just so we'd buy it. Yeah. It was on a little country road. Not much traffic. That's really nice. Yeah. Great first house. Well, Mom and Dad came out to visit and mm. we got that first house. So I think we were a little bit short on the down payment. And, um, Dad said, oh, I'll give you that for a wedding present. Yeah. <laughs> it was only a thousand or two. I don't know. That was my first job. I used to design these things. Drag line buckets. Drag line buckets? Drag lines. Yeah, for digging coal. I think I'd done some design work on that one in mid '60s. It was Esco okay. Corporation. So you designed these? Yeah. You drew these up? Yeah. Wow. That's my initials right there. I think it was 120 yards. I think was the biggest one. Wow. That's huge. The biggest ones they went to Australia, I think. And they're used for scooping coal? Yeah, well, scooping off the top soil and stuff to get down to the coal, oh. coal and then, then the coal in. I wasn't really proud of what I was designing. Really? Yeah, that was the first job. Yeah. <laughs> first time I'd ever made real money. Was there something that you were like dreaming of designing while you were doing this like man I, I wish i could be designing this other thing well i wanted to get into uh, architecture was my first goal which i ended up doing structural engineering okay I worked for usco for i think two or three years and then i went to burlington uh, mm -hmm. and designed some of machinery this is how i Find out about bearings and gears and all that stuff. Oh. So maybe that experience helped with my water wheel. Yeah. I don't know. So these are the internal parts of a sawmill? Yeah, it's cables they use for moving the lumber and the mm -hmm. logs and stuff. This mm -hmm. is a, a feeder. <laughs> it feeds the lumber into the next step of the process. This is a Oh, stud trimmer. You probably you know what that is. That's pretty self yeah. yeah. Just trim the studs to the right length. This I can actually make out into <laughs> yeah, what's going on here. A little clearer in that one. And you have to figure out all the parts and the bearings and stuff that goes on to it. And then they have the shop right outside of where we designed this stuff. So 
just walked downstairs and got to the shop if they had any problems. That's cool. And then the economy went down, and so I got laid off, I think. Mm. And then I went over to Alice Chalmers, which designed substations and uh, high voltage towers, transmission towers. So that was kind of structural, mm -hmm. structural steel stuff. Mm -hmm. That was over in uh, Beaver, Tiger, somewhere right way over there. And their economy went down and got laid off again. So I went over, came over to Vancouver or mm -hmm. to Western Electric. They were just setting up a new factory for building uh, switch gear for telephones and stuff. Hmm. It's, it's part of, was part of AT&T and they needed structures designed to move the switching things around in the, in the factory mm -hmm. that they were building. So I worked there for a few years until everything got set up and then there wasn't any more structural work to do. I was bored and, and they said, well, just find something to do, you know, and they didn't care if I was working or not. <laughs> I was wandering around trying to amuse myself. And, finally got laid off there because this wasn't any work I was interested in. So I retired after that. Okay, it's getting dark outside and we need some more light in here, so we're going to go fire up the water wheels. You see how much is running now. Yeah. In about an hour, that's going to drop right down so there won't be any water going over there. Oh, really? Yeah. So you worked for Esco, yeah. Irvington, Alice Chalmers, and Western Electric. And then at what age did you retire? About 30, 31. My God. <laughs> so at that point you just figured you'd made enough money to, yeah. like, I don't need to do this anymore. I was going to, I planned to work a little bit longer. Yeah. I was, I think I was aiming for having a hundred thousand saved up, and I didn't really get close to that. But, but that's in the seventies. We yeah. can't do that now. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. The next <laughs> next episode. <laughs> well, that's Mount Climbing Mount St. Helens, the base where we started climbing. Yeah, I remember you shared. I think we did some, some of those. Of these, yeah. You know, and, yeah. When, when we you did were doing your mountain thing. Yeah. It's from when I, I climbed the mountain. There's all the details on there. This was way back before it erupted. Oh yeah. my gosh. It says Mount St. Helens Expedition. <laughs> oh, consumed on Mount St. Helens Expedition. <laughs> July 25th, 65. Climb began at 4 a.m. Summit reached at 12 noon. Descent started 1 p.m. Base camp reached 3 p.m. Alan and Me Carol. and my first wife. That looks more like Mount Hood there. 67. This is, on top, uh, this is on top of Mount Hood. Okay. That might be too. I don't know what's it say. Yeah, these two are from top of Mount Hood. So do you know how many times you've summited it? I think three. One time we turned around. Because it was, the weather was too bad. All right. It's up on Mount Hood. Where the sulfur fumes are coming out. By, uh, this is an illumination rock, I think, getting near the top. It was hot and uh, melts the snow. There's so much heat coming out up there. Mm. Third wife stuck, <laughs> snuck in there somewhere. <laughs> She's not here yet. <laughs> These don't even belong in this decade. <laughs> All right, everyone, so I'm back on a different day, and Al and I just gathered firewood up on the hill. But before I came, Al said, Hey, I found a, um, what do you, a champagne bottle? Yeah, I've got two from Mount Hood one from in the 60s and one for in the 70s. Okay, so here's the bottle. What do we got? Here's full moon, Julie. Whenever I climb, make sure there's a full moon. 2.30 in the morning, we didn't get to the summit till 11, eight and a half eight hours. Eight and a half hours, yeah. Climb it. And it took five and a half hours to get down. Alan and Carol. So, where did you start? We started from Timberline Lodge. Okay. Yeah. And I don't think uh, we ever talked about divorce. We talked about when I got married, right? To mm -hmm. Carol. Mm -hmm. To uh, 
get the marriage deferment. Then, I think it was 1967, the government decided they didn't have enough single young men, so they did away with the marriage deferment. Oh. And we'd agreed when we got married that that was the only reason we were getting married. We liked each other and all that, and loved living together and being together and all that, but marriage was not in our plans. <laughs> So we did that just to keep me out of getting drafted. So after they ended that, Carol said, okay, it's time to move on now. I said, yep, that's right. That's, that's what we agreed to. So we got a divorce and it was all friendly and she didn't care about keeping the house because we kept all our finances separate anyway. She was making good money. So uh, I kept the house because I'd paid all. For it, um, everything. I gave her a few thousand so she could get a nice car. And she didn't have a car. She moved into Portland to an apartment. We even double dated a couple times after that. So then, when we, after we got divorced, I, well, I guess I got a notice before that from the draft board. It said you are no longer deferred. You're 1A again. So I went in and talked to my boss, showed him the letter and said, well, if you want me to keep working here, I need you to write a letter to my draft board saying I'm essential to the economy or whatever you want to say. So he did, he wrote a letter and uh, I got a job deferment until the war was over. Ended up okay. Yeah, <laughs> oh, glad you didn't have to go. Yeah, all right, so that was the end of that era. <laughs> Are we out of picture? 70s now? Oh no, can't be. No, that's a different box. All right, well, it looks like we got through this mountain of photos <laughs> that Al collected from the 60s. And there's a few more that you think there might be. It should be in the 60s, yeah, but yeah. they're not here. It's another job that he worked, and then that's where he met his second wife. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so we might have to get into that next time. Yep. One wife at a time. Yeah. That's enough. <laughs> There's two more to come. <laughs> well, hopefully this process that we're going through is helping you be like, all right, like, at least all this is from this era, all <laughs> yeah. this is from this era. But you're having to go through all this before mm -hmm. we meet up and mm -hmm. put everything together because it's not all like this <laughs> before we start. So. It's a mess. Yeah. yeah. I know I certainly appreciate it and from the feedback that I've gotten from these videos, a lot of people appreciate you sharing your story. So I've read the comments. Yeah, yeah that's neat. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps getting more interesting. <laughs> We're only halfway there, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well.